Hello, and thank you for joining us today, joining the IHA, Cuisinart, and Registria for a live webinar on the importance of knowing your customer for higher performing digital programs. We're excited to have everyone with us today. But before we start today's webinar, a couple of housekeeping items for all that are listening. Um, we, as presenters, welcome you to ask questions at any point during the webinar using the question field that's in the control panel of the GoToWebinar system. You can see that if you scroll down right below your attendee name. We will take questions at the end of the webinar and hopefully get through as many questions as possible, but you're welcome to submit them throughout as they come to mind to you. We will also be recording this webinar and sending everyone who has attended a link to the webinar so that you can review it again or pass it on to colleagues. You will receive that email directly from Registria um, and uh, anticipate to see that in the next day or two. So with that, we are excited to provide you with a very informative webinar and a little bit of what you, you will learn today. So we'll start off with the importance of knowing the people who own your products and really the power that comes with that knowledge and that data. We'll also touch on innovations in identifying who owns your products, so what technologies you can leverage to better identify those folks that do own your products and how to do so faster using today's leading technology. We will also talk about how to apply the data that you have on your product owners and very specifically to your digital programs for greater success. And then lastly, we'll also talk about four real-world use cases with perspective from Cuisinart, so a leading brand that's doing a lot in a very sophisticated way in the digital uh, program space. So with that, let me introduce today's speakers. Our first speaker, Christine, is the Senior Digital Marketing Manager at Cuisinart. Uh, a division of Conair. Christine has more than eight years experience in, digital market, in the digital marketing space and over 12 years on the agency side. She's worked with brands such as SC Johnson, News America, and Discover Global Network. At Cuisinart, Christine is responsible for leading the digital efforts in the U.S., including their digital strategy, social media, email, paid media, and advertising, and implementing new marketing technology to better suit the needs of their online customers. Christine will be joined today by Matt Parsons, who is the Executive Vice President at Registria. In Matt's role, he's primarily focused on client, uh, Registria client success and satisfaction. With more than 20 years of client services and operations experience, Matt joined Registria in March of 2017, and he is very focused on not only client success, but implementation, data services, and reporting and analytics. Prior to Registria, Matt was an executive at Power Reviews, and which was acquired by a Bizarre Voice in 2012, and restarted as an independent company in 2014, so extensive experience in the ratings and review space. And before joining Power Reviews, he held client services roles in operations at Quest Communications, Bearing Point, and FogDog.com. So with that, I'm going to pass um, the speaker right to Matt Parsons at Registry S. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Heather. It's great to be with everybody today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start with a quote from Forrester Research that I think sums up um, what we're going to cover today. Success is uh, not only the number of new customers and number of products sold, but how involved and engaged customers are or brands are with a company's uh, products and ideas. We must think differently about our approach and find a balance between acquiring customers and retaining them. It's ever more important with all the challenges and changes uh, we're facing that, that brands are facing today. So as, as Heather shared, I'm from Registria. Uh, for those of you who don't know who we are, we work with over 300 global brands and our solution is on hundreds of millions of products. We've helped identify over 130 million product owners through our innovative product registration solution and generated millions in service plan and accessory high margin revenue for brands annually. 
here are a few of the world-class brands, uh, in addition to Cuisinart, that we have the pleasure to work with. Diving deeper into Registria's products and solutions, we help brands engage with their product owners during the entire life cycle of the product ownership. Whereas in the past, the end goal was identifying new owners through product registration, that's no longer enough. We built a comprehensive new owner onboarding experience that starts with streamlining the registration process to capture more owners, offering model-specific service plans, accessories, and partner offers to drive higher margin revenue, providing new owner services and support through multiple touch email and SMS welcome campaigns, including providing product information, new owner video guides, tips and tricks, and product support, and helping brands generate the most authentic and highest quality product reviews using their existing product review solutions like a Bazaar Voice or Power Reviews. Today's webinar focuses on the importance of knowing your customers. Let's start by asking ourselves why you should know who owns your product. Well, the answer is likely obvious at a high level. Listing out the reasons can help you build a case within your organization to take another look at what you're doing today and what you could do tomorrow. In short, whether your goals are centered around increasing your CRM, driving direct sales, collecting the most product reviews, gathering more insights into your customers, or providing more personalized ownership experience in the, you know, the most personalized ownership experience in the industry, it all starts with identifying your owners. The more owners you know, the more success you will have with these programs. In summary, in an ever-changing retail landscape, brands need to take ownership of their product owner's experience before someone else does, as control shifts between brands, retailers, and online retailers. Knowing who owns your products is the best fuel to help build or accelerate performance in your direct-to-consumer programs. Your current customer should always be viewed as your next customer. First-party first data is the best way to drive improvements around informed targeting, segmentation, and audience development, especially with shifts in digital audience development underway with the likes of Facebook. And finally, knowing your customers extends beyond marketing and services, but into product development, support, and other strategic initiatives as you navigate the ever-changing retail landscape. So I'm going to um, ask Christine to share some insights on why Cuisinart has prioritized knowing um, who your customers are. Sure. Thanks, Matt. So Cuisinart has prioritized knowing who our customers are since this first-party data is so rich. Just like we focus on building our email customer database, or using various digital channels such as search um, and social to drive customer acquisition, why wouldn't we focus on identifying more of our actual product owners and purchasers? Registria has helped to enhance our digital marketing efforts and increase that overall customer funnel. Great, thanks Christine. So let's dive deeper into the tactics available to help you identify more owners. In the past, the only method was a paper uh, registration card as shown here, likely including many uh, demographic questions that I would argue is maybe a little bit intrusive these days, and it led to a low registration rate. We're talking single digits. Some of you may still include paper cards in your product, and that's okay, but in the digital age, it, can be, it can't be that only method. The other thing that has changed is the value to register for the owner. It's no longer just about protecting your warranty, but instead about connecting with that brand to get the most value out of your product that you just purchased. You have to think about that owner engagement, the intimacy, and in bro those broader use cases when thinking about uh, identifying your owners. Well, there's still some instances where including a short paper registration card is beneficial. A uh, phone in your pocket is a much more efficient way to engage new product owners, so we're going to talk about that next. Registry introduced Photo Register in 2015, a mobile optimized digital registration experience. This award-winning solution is a frictionless, quick, and fun way for new owners to engage with brands. On hundreds of millions of products globally, it's the most efficient way to connect with your customers. But don't let me talk about it. Let's hear from Christine. Uh, Cuisinart was an early adopter offering mobile product registration, specifically Photo Register. How would you describe the impact it has made to your efforts to identify Cuisinart owners? 
it has had a major impact. Um, so photo register has increased the speed at which users have registered, um, which has increased overall registrations for us. Um, for example, in the last year, we had an increase of 20% year over year in new product registrations. And that's solely due to the fact that everyone has a mobile device connected to them at all times. And when we look at Q4 data, we had the highest product registrations on actual Christmas day and um, the day after. So instead of people um, mingling with their family, they were photo registering, but it also meant that they were very excited about the product they just bought and they took the time to register their product. And um, you know, this just enhances the overall user experience and shows that the user was very engaged um, with this. That, that's great, Christine. I think um, you know we've we've seen that across a lot of our brands, and I I, I really am surprised. Um, you know, another brand uh, uh, that we work with, you know, they they paused and uh, had had quite a few number of um, uh, shaver registrations um, on Christmas Christmas Day, and I think it just speaks to just the ease and, like you said, the excitement of opening that box, starting to use that product, and just making it easy to connect with that brand. So that's that's fantastic. So um, as we look ahead, um, as consumer preferences change, brands have to adopt, and um, identifying your owners um, takes a, a, another path into other, um, in a, you know, other ways of doing that. Enabling product registrations through voice, uh, smart devices, social platforms is really key um, to identify your owners. Registria supports registrations via Facebook and Line messaging apps, via voice-enabled devices such as Alexa and Google, 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 Google and um, via smart devices. So now let's transition into the power of knowing your customer now that we've really discussed the best method to identify those owners and how Cuisinart has been innovating in their approach. So Christine, back to you. Um, we've touched on the importance of knowing your customers. Now let's um, uh, uh, start with the foundation of that owner data and how Cuisinart views the, the owner data. You collect it, but then what? Sure. So we all know that there's a wealth of data out there, tons of third-party third data and different resources. But first-party data is truly the best data, since this tells me about who our current customers are. So um, when they register for a product, at a, minim at a minimum, we require that uh, we collect um, where they live, what they bought, where, why they bought it, and whether it was an online or in-store purchase. We also, of course, collect their email address, which we can then later append to further understand who these customers are. Working with Registria, we made the initial registration process as simple and easy as possible. Um, we keep the registration page short to help with conversion rate and maximize the number of people signing up. So we really want this to be as, as seamless um, journey um, for the end user um, as it can be. And then from this, we use this data and um, share it internally across our various marketing teams. We can look at um, purchasers by specific product or overall category. Sometimes we may think we know exactly who our customer is, but the data might tell a slightly different story. And we're also, um, when we're looking to build a new product with the product marketing team, um, we can look back at the last year or two of purchasers and glean insights from this data. Um, additionally, from an advertising perspective, if we know who our customer is, we can find more of these people. So I'll take this data and I'll supply it out to our uh, media buying and planning agency, again, at a high level, just to give them some um, informed insights on who's purchasing and registering the product. And then also we can take this data and um, match and deploy and create lookalike audiences off of this data. Um, lastly, we can use this information for product surveys and recalls. So um, in the instance where there was a product recall, you know exactly who the customer is, um, what product they own, and their model um, number, so you can get in touch with them as quickly as possible. Thanks. That, that's great, Christine. I appreciate all the detail, because I think one of the things that I find is uh, you know, a lot of brands are collecting this information, but but honestly, don't have the the programs in place to to do anything of, about it or be able to leverage it as as much as possible. So I think this is a a great roadmap for brands out there today to consider how 
how do you leverage this data throughout all of your organization, whether it's uh, product development or um, customer engagement, et cetera. Um, you mentioned uh, um, you know, uh, a couple of use cases. We've had a number of customers that have used it um, in the uh, service reminders and kind of recall space, which is um, obviously very important as well. So um, thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. So um, let's, uh, let's move into the next question, Christine. So you have um, you know, new data coming in from registrations, and it's building your CRM database. Can you walk us through um, how you use it for um, your uh, email campaigns? Sure, and this is where I get the most excited. Um, we use this data to um, fuel and drive our um, email CRM program. So we send emails to people um, who express interest. People can clearly opt in through all different avenues, but this is um, the richest since people are registering their products, they're opting in. We choose to use a double opt-in system, which means that um, once the user opts in, we then send them another email to confirm they absolutely want to hear from us. And then from there, we know what they um, have bought um, and where they've, where they've bought it. We have this information and we can upsell, cross-sell, we can segment. We, um, if we know, for example, that we are launching a new coffee maker and we know that someone's um, product registration is going to expi be expiring, we can tap into that database and send them an email. Um, about a new product, a new coffee maker. So um, sometimes even the older data can be the most valuable. But I will say that um, this, because of Registria's feed into our email database, um, we do have um, well within um, industry average um, open and click-through rates. And I believe it's because th it's coming from actual quiz in our customers. That's, that's great, Christine. I, I, I think, um, you know, the, when, when I speak to a number of our customers, I mean, this is kind of that, that number one fuel for the CRM programs and being able to have um, the, the most highly engaged CRM programs. Um, I know uh, Registria, we, we send emails um, and have a robust marketing services program that we uh, provide uh, certain brands. And we see that same in our data itself. You get higher click-throughs, higher engagement, because these owners are engaged, they're excited, they're, they're, they're ready to really connect with that brand and really um, uh, get the most use out of the product. Um, I was gonna comment, you, you mentioned the double opt-in. I know that that's something a little bit more unique to Cuisinart. I think you guys, uh, you know, the strength of your brand, you're in a, a better position to implement that double opt-in. Um, you know, regardless, I think, of a, a brand's um, policy, whether it's a double or single opt-in, I think the point, um, you know, the most important point is really just the more owners you identify, um, the more impact you're going to have on your CRM. Um, and I know during our last QBR, you shared a bit about um, your brand ambassador program. Maybe you share just a little bit about that as well, because that's a, a really interesting um, use case as well. Sure, and just before I jump to the brand ambassador program, um, going back to email and just the how people perceive it as being very positive, um, they they look forward to receiving the contests and the recipes and these things. So they're opting in upfront for these things, but then they're getting um, what's considered very um, relevant and um, exciting. Uh, you know information so it's definitely this is this is the core to um, to our email program and then um, to Matt to your point about the brand ambassador program so we also use this information to help um, identify current users so that way um, we can reach out these are actual police our customers and we can ask them are they interested in shooting um, or taking photos and producing content for us. So again, we can, in this example, it was our coffee maker. We re, re, um, went into the database, found those customers, sent them an email, and then from there, they created um, content. So another way to um, engage the customer and they see it as a, as a value. I love it. That is, uh, that is 
that is a great program. So thanks for sharing that uh, with, with the audience. Um, well, let's let's uh, let's move into the next use case um, and talk about building out a direct to consumer program. Um, so, you know, it is it is a, an, an initiative that many of our clients are considering or or doing now. Um, what has been Cuisinart's approach? So we just um, launched our um, D2C um, parts and accessories business. And with that, we um, are looking to obviously monetize that, that um, revenue stream. So um, what you see on this slide is something that we're considering. Since people sometimes um, don't even know that there are complementary, complementary accessories available to them. So our channel partners, they still are the, have the first chance at the point of retail. Um, but this further helps support and enhance the new product ownership experience because it's building a relationship directly with the customer, and it's, would, it would build a new revenue stream for us. So um, essentially, if someone registers their ice cream maker or their food processor, we can then send them emails um, asking them if they would like an extra ice cream bowl or um, if they need um, water filters for their coffee machine. So we, we know all that information. Then also on, on um, the example here, when they've registered when they, uh, on the thank you page, they're then um, presented with the parts and accessories that align with their product. So it also um, helps the customer because sometimes they don't even know these things exist. So um, it basically creates a happy new owner. So that way they know that these things um, can be found if they need them. Yeah, you know that's um, like, like you said. I think that the 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 key piece is um, you had shared it, you know during the prep that you know a lot of times these these customers don't know that they have that um, additional you know ice cream bowl that they can purchase to have as a backup. And so presenting that in flow during the registration, they've just bought it, they're excited, and hey, I can I can add this, um, and then I have as a backup. You know, fantastic uh, use case. Um, you know, we when we look at across all of our customers when we've implemented um, the, the direct to consumer program, um, whether it's service plans or accessories or partner offers, in that registration flow, we see a five to ten percent um, attach rate. Um, you know, people making an additional purchase, which, like you said, you know, it not only like leads to higher satisfaction for the the customer, but then for for the brand it's um, high margin revenue that can offset some of the costs of the program and other marketing and outreach and, and you know, aspects of that. So um, that's, a, that's a great use case. Thanks for uh, sharing that as well. Um, and our last use case um, is about ratings and reviews, something that is near and dear to my heart after spending over a decade uh, working in that space. Um, and, and I think everybody on, on the call understands the importance of um, ratings and reviews. Uh, not only to influence um, consumer purchases, but also um, it's impactful in the retailer relationships. Um, Christine, Cuisinart has done a, uh, seen great results from your strategy. What are some, some of the key tactics you're using to drive um, more ratings and reviews? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that um, registry is basically the starting point for our, our ratings and review process. So we know we only reach out to the users who have um, bought the product and registered the product. Then we also make sure that they've had time to use the product. And um, we then, three weeks after they've registered, we ask them to write an authentic review. And we know that these reviews are um, real because um, other folks can't just go on and, and you know create reviews. And I think that's a big concern for a lot of um, companies out there right now. So um, this this helps um, or this drives our ratings and reviews process, and um, by doing that, this also helps with product coverage. Um, so we have not only just you know uh, reviews across a large number of our products, but we also have the volume because then these reviews get syndicated out to our retail partners. So it's a win-win all around. Great, and and just to you know to clarify, so it's so it's very specific. We're we're not your review provider, right? You're using a Bizarre Voice no. or a Power, but we're yeah. we're um, 
we're actually just helping kind of fuel those reviews. Is that right? Exactly. Yep. We're we're using a, a ratings and review company, but um, the the actual data um, originates um, through at the registry of database. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I find um, again. I you know having spent a decade in um, in the ratings and review space, we spent a lot of time optimizing the right of review forms and the review display. And then you know when I came over to Registria, um, it was kind of that eureka moment that said, well, wait a second. If I identify more owners, then that's going to lead to uh, more reviews. And in fact. If you have a 4x increase in your registration rates, you're going to have a 4x increase in your product reviews um, that you collect. So um, it, it is it is really important uh, fuel into your rating and review program. And as Christine said, I'll just reemphasize because we've seen this across many brands. Um, not only does this help you um, collect more reviews and have better coverage that then you can syndicate out to your retail channels, but we've also seen that it helps improve the overall rating. Um, Hopefully, people are aware of if you're just passive and waiting for someone to write a review, honestly, that review is going to tend to swing more negative. Um, there's a lot of data behind that. But if you're actively engaging your owners and asking them to write a review, that's going to improve your overall um, star rating as well. And, and we saw with one of our brands, they, uh, they moved from uh, a below uh, three star average rating to over a four and a half star rating by just focusing on engaging their owners. Um, through the, the, the registration um, data and really kind of engaging them. So, um, so thanks for sharing that as well. So I think it's about time to um, kind of summarize the key takeaways and then we can open it up to um, questions. Uh, I'll just kind of uh, uh, summarize and then Christine uh, add, it, add you know, any additional color you have. Um, you know, really it comes down to four important points. The right onboarding experience um, can build your CRM database. So invest in that owner identification, onboarding that customer, really identifying who they are. That's a great opportunity to build your CRM. Um, owner registration data is gold when it um, is used to advance digital and direct-to-consumer initiatives. And um, owner knowledge is power across the organization. So it's really helpful not only for marketing uh, and service-related activities, but product development. And finally, that better owner experience leads to more engaged customer, more satisfied customer, more loyal customer, more long-term value, and uh, better ratings and reviews. Um, so, uh, Christine, any anything to add from uh, from your perspective? Yeah, I would just say that you know, overall, customers today um, expect you to know more about who they are and. And um, you know, I talked about a lot of different things here, and if there's one key takeaway, it's that by having this data and by having the user register, um, you then know who they are, you know how to market to them, you know how to um, give them the best sort of experience um, possible, and you know how to um, give them offers and, um, and help them like love their product. So I have to say that you know, with my time working with Registria, it's been incredibly impactful and um, it's been it's been great. So definitely very happy with um, the whole process and um, overall just just working with the team to help our customers. Thanks, Christine. I really appreciate that. And um, uh, as uh, as I've shared with you, it's a real pleasure to work with uh, the Cleves and our team as well. So um, I think we're going to open it up to questions. I think Heather, you're. Uh, uh, Leading those? Yep, I will. So, um, for the attendees on the line, if you have a question for Matt or Christine after hearing the the um, content and topics presented, you can put those into the questions field into the control panel. But I'll start with the first question that I can see that was submitted pretty early. Um, if you are, and this is for Matt or Christine, if you are a small brand, why should you invest in the F product registration? If it's only for large brands, is I think maybe the angle that they're asking. Christine, do you want me to take that? Or? Yeah, uh, well, I think I can jump in just quickly. Um, I would say if you're a small brand, this is probably a, a great starting point for you um, because you're going to um, start to fuel that funnel, which um, if you're if 
someone's registering, then you're collecting their information and you're building that email database. And, um, you know, and then it's also about user engagement. So I, I don't think that if, you know, whether you're small, medium, or large, I think that a product registration is just as important. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 what I would add to that is, just, you know, if you, I understand the question, which is, you know, the brands have, you know, and especially some of the smaller brands, you know, one person has 20 different roles within that brand, and so, you know, it, it feels like it may be adding another another role. But actually, what I would argue is it's actually helping you drive more value out of the existing things you're doing. I mean, I know you're sending emails. I know that you're considering direct to consumer. I know that you want to engage with your, you know, your owners. I know you want to make sure they get the most value out of it. And this really is that fuel, uh, Christine, as Christine said, to really drive that engagement with the owners. So what I would do is actually pivot it on the head and say, you can't afford not to. Now, I understand that there may be a lot of other things that you have to do. And, you know, a little plug for registry, we have marketing services and other um, solutions that can help make this a more comprehensive program so that it can be turnkey and, and you know, you don't have to do everything yourself and we're happy to talk to you about it. But if you're not focused on identifying your customers, um, you're just not getting the maximum um, value out of all the other initiatives I, I know you're doing or contemplating. Yeah, both, both fantastic answers. Um, let me ask the next question that just came in. So it actually is a nice segue from Matt, your comment on um, using uh, communications, digital communications. But the question is, are people or brands using um, the same information for more traditional marketing campaigns? And by traditional, I, I'm guessing they mean like print and advertise and traditional advertising. Yeah, um, well, why, don't I, why don't I take a stab and then Christine uh, add some additional color. I mean, you know, one of the beauties of um, the, the traditional product registration on, you know, onboarding experience is that you're collecting some, some great data about that owner. So you're not only collecting a, a name or an email address, but you're also collecting, uh, using photo register, the mobile phone of the user that you can choose to then have them opt into SMS messages. You're collecting the physical address that not only is important from uh, more traditional mailers that you can leverage, but it also, Christine, you know, shared this uh, earlier, you know, when you think about um, the evolution of social, that physical address is really important when you're looking at, you know, advertising on Facebook and other social media channels. So I, I would yeah, argue um, it's a great driver. Go ahead, Christine. Yeah, no, what I would also say is in more traditional um, methods of advertising. So if you were to take the, um, let's say a, a specific product and then you look at um, geographically overall where those people live, you could um, run print advertising within those specific regions or um, you have the, you have the um, users or customers information down to the zip code level. So you could send out a direct mail postcard with a promotion. So absolutely I see that for also um, like more traditional methods. Perfect. Um, the next question that has come in is, we don't have a registration program today. Where do we start? Well, I'll, um, you know, I, I, I think uh, there's, there's a, it, it may seem intimidating, but it's actually a pretty easy um, program to start. And, and really, it comes down to just a couple of simple pieces. One is identifying how you want to promote that in your product packaging. Um, and there's a lot of different methods that Registria um, can share with you around, you know, different ways to put a sticker on product, put an insert in the product, put something on the outside of the packaging of the product. Um, and, and, and while I understand a lot of factories are, um, you know, around the globe, we've worked with uh, factories around the globe and, um, you know, having been in over uh, 300 factories, we've got a lot of experience in that space. The, the next piece then is just that digital um, onboarding moment. So when someone engages um, with that registration event, you know, what do they what do they do and how do they go through it? And so we have some um, nice uh, templates that uh, help drive the most um, engagement and the most uh, you know the highest completion rates as far as someone completing that onboarding moment that is branded um, to your brand. So 
So really, uh, you know, with a with a simple phone call, we can work out um, pretty quickly, you know, the, the the path to implementing a product, and then um, also getting it, uh, you know, the digital aspects uh, live. And we uh, provide a lot of the templates and, and all of that, and do the design services. So it's it's pretty turnkey, I would I would think. Christine, I um, I don't know if you have anything to add around that, but uh, would love to hear your perspective. Yeah, I would say um, it's a very um, simple UI. For example, um, I use it where I go in and can um, pull data. So, for example, if I'm like going back to brand ambassadors, I can put in the model number. Um, you know, I I didn't set this up from the beginning, but I've certainly been involved in making changes and updates, and it's it's pretty simple. Um, so I you know. I would say that that you know you don't need a um, a, a massive team to do this. Um, Registry will definitely help throughout the process. That's great. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we've got a lot of questions on ratings and reviews, so I'm going to choose one of the four. Um, the the question I'm going to ask, and for both Matt and Christine, is you talked about generating ratings and reviews post after asking them or sending them an email. Do you have any insight into how it's influencing purchase decisions based on the ratings and reviews program? Christine, do you want um, to start or you want me to? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I would say that we, the more ratings and reviews on a specific product only help influence other um, people purchasing that product. So um, I would say, and the person who's reviewing it has obviously purchased it, um, but by, you know, typically when you go to a, a retail site, people will sort naturally by ratings and reviews. So I definitely think that um, it helps influence actual purchases. But Matt, I'll let you speak to that a little bit more. Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of data out there that supports um, higher conversion rates on retail sites, um, both the, the, the number of reviews and the um, quality of the reviews. And, and honestly, negative is not negative, um, because negative is a credible um, critique that shows that it's authentic. Um, so really, you know, it's about the number of reviews, and, you know, uh, a lot of retailers are, are using reviews as a way to um, you know, get onto their site as well. Um, so not only can this help you distribute to more channels, but it then also influences the sales once you're in those channels. Great. So I, I do have a question, and I'm going to ask this one of Mac because I think it applies. But the question being asked, does this really only work with certain product types, or is it successful across multiple product types? And that's a, a great question because we're focused today on kind of the home goods and housewares um, sector, but does it work on other product types? Yeah, you know, um, we work with um, brands across all industries, and I, you know, the short answer is it works um, in in every industry out there. And really, what it comes down to is, um, you know, our, our formula is uh, make, you know, our formula for success is make. Um, the, uh, the registration prompts visible, valuable, and easy. And so, you know, if you if you make it visible, regardless of what category or industry you're in, so when someone is unboxing it, or if it's a sticker on an installed product, or you know what have you, you make it valuable. I mean, there has to be, uh, I, I, you know, over a uh, you know 15 years in the ratings and reviews and registration space, I like to remind people, you know. They're spending a couple seconds of their day giving you valuable information about them that they want to make sure there's a return on that on that investment on that you know on that deal with the brand that hey I'm I want to engage with you but that deal is I want it to then be valuable to me so I want to make sure that you know I get timely communications that I get the support when I need it that I get that new onboarding ownership experience and so emphasizing that. Um, uh, it is very key. And, it, and my point is, across these different industries, there are different incentives that are going to drive that behavior. And then um, the easy piece, I, I hope people, um, uh, you know, walk away. The, you know, the fact that uh, we've seen lots of registrations on, on uh, Christmas Day, as an example, tells me 
we have kind of checked that box with voter register that it's an easy, quick digital registration. Great. Um, so I'm going to wrap with one more question, and that is, we just do paper card now. Should we abandon paper card registration completely? Well, you know, I, I uh, th this is my point of view on, on paper card. We, we still find consumers mailing in paper cards, even when um, there is a uh, photo register on that card. So what that tells me is that paper isn't dead yet. Uh, but I do believe that we are in a fast-paced digital economy, and the primary driver is that digital, you know, registration experience, and paper will continue to, you know, to decline. And so the short answer is, I'm not sure what you're going to do if you don't move to this uh, at some point soon, because paper will decline, and, and, and it'll continue to decline. Uh, and, you know, again, going back to all the use cases we mentioned, you know, presumably this data is valuable to you and all the programs that we just discussed and all the use cases that Cuisinart shared. And if that's the case, then you have to make the pivot. Gotcha. Christine, anything you'd want to add to that? No, I think um, Matt nailed it. I, at, at the end of the day, people um, are connected to their mobile device, and um, the mobile photo register is just such a simple process that it it it, it makes sense. So, great. So, um, those are the kind of the themes of the questions we've received from the participants. So thank you, Matt and Christine, for not only presenting the information, but uh, taking questions from the attendees. I'm going to close the webinar um, with just an offer for all the webinar participants. Uh, Registria is coming up out with their annual trend report, which will be issued this month, about mid-month. The trend report will give trends in not only product registration, but ownership experiences and is a great resource for brands to benchmark their performance against others, not only within their, their vertical, but across all consumer, consumer durable brand product categories. If you'd like a copy of the trend report sent to you, reserve your copy, I should say, you can text the word trends to the number 71403, and Registria will send you a copy of the report when it's issued. So with that, again, I want to thank uh, both Matt from Registria and Christine from Cuisinart for presenting on today's webinar hosted by the IHA. Thank you for participating. Just a reminder, you will receive a recorded link of this webinar to refer to in your files. Thanks so much.